So what we're going to do is we're going to re-record this, but instead of actually using the keys and playing something, we're just going to record in our knobs. Yep, we're going to just play with our knobs and nothing else. Alchemy Synths were added in GarageBand 2.3, and it was the first thing that was added that was only able to be used on certain bits of hardware, because it does require a 64-bit iPad. The older 32-bit architecture iPads and iPhones do not run Alchemy Synth. So to use Alchemy Synth, first up, you do need to be running the latest version of GarageBand, which is an iOS 13 or iOS 14, and you do need to have an iPad Air 2, an iPhone 6S or above, an iPad Mini 4 or above, or an iPod Touch 4th, 7th generation. Got through it. So you do need a more recent iPad, but that's most these days, really. Like, there's a lot of iPads out there that can use this. So why is Alchemy Synth so cool? Well, it was kind of unheard of that something of this power would be added to an app like GarageBand for free, because the Alchemy Synth has some features in there and the ability to sculpt and craft your sound that just hasn't been seen or heard in anything like this before. So we've added in one of the Alchemy Synth sounds here. This is the soft analog. No, it's not. That's not the Alchemy sound. That is a regular synth sound. This is the Alchemy sound, my favorite one, the epic cloud formation. I was just thinking, hang on, that doesn't look right. This is Alchemy Synth. Now on the surface, you're like, Pete, it's a synth sound and it's keyboards and we can come in here and we can change these around and we've got a whole bunch of bass and brass and keys and leads and everything in between. So if we go the airy synth lead, which is another one of my favourites. 80s. The 80s are here, right? So this is what we can do with Alchemy Synth. Let's lay down a bit of a beat so that we can actually put the synth to the test. So we'll come back out here to our main screen and we'll come into, let's use the beat sequencer. I don't use the beat sequencer often enough, but it is super cool. Uh, what we'll do is we'll grab, won't use the 808, but let's go with something a bit interesting. What about one of our vintage drum machines? Why don't we go with the uh, TR-707? Yeah, I'm going to go with that absolute default 707 beat because I reckon this could help craft a bit of an 80s tune. So if we hit the record button on this one, it's going to record in. And we'll just record in two bars of that because we can then loop it out. We'll come back out to here. This is why the beat sequence is so cool. We can just grab this end and then we can tap it and then we can loop it. And there you go. We've got eight bars of... Oh, yeah. So let's now bring in some Alchemy Synth. So I'll, I'll actually delete this out so I can show you how to use it and how to add it completely. So we hit the plus button here, we go to keyboards, and you can tap straight on Alchemy Synth here, but if you want to see where these are stored, tap on more sounds, and then up the top here, make sure you go all the way back to your main categories. This is where people get stuck. Sometimes I say to people, oh, you can go in and use the other instruments here and grab a French horn and an oboe, and they're like, I can't see them. And often it's because they're already here in the Alchemy Synth, and they're looking at these going, I don't have other. It's, no, you do have it, you just got to go back. So go back to your main categories, but in this case, we do want to go into the Alchemy Synth. And and uh, now I've forgotten what that cool instrument that we were using was. So we're going to have to find something else. Let's go to synth here and let's find a classic 80s synth. Come on, we're doing an 80s track. Classic 80s synth, synth has to work for us, right? Yeah, very cool, right? Now, we can record something straight in here and it'll be fine. So let's just... Uh let's just uh, record in a bit of a sound here. We'll hit the record button and... So we record in a little pattern there and we're getting our 80s sounds built out here. The start was a bit dodgy, wasn't it? Start was dodgy. But here's the good thing. Of course, we can edit this. So you, these are just MIDI notes. So Alchemy Synth uses your MIDI instrument. You can come in here and if you're a little bit late on that, we can go, Whoop. let's just bring it on back. We can hit done on that. We can, of course, use things like quantization that I've talked about before. If we go to our track settings, we can quantize this. At the moment, we've got none on there, but if we were out of time, we can quantize it. But there's so much we can do to shape our sound with the uh, Alchemy synth, and that's what I wanted to show you here. So if we go back to our keyboard by 
ticking, clicking, tapping on this one, then uh, we can come in here and adjust this sound. We've got these, these pads. Now these eight pads, you can obviously select each individual one. So you can have the bright, the filter down, the tremolo, the thin uh, low frequency oscillator. There's a whole bunch and every different synth has different settings here. These are your presets. So consider these your presets. And the cool thing about this is you can land it in between a few presets. So you can really hone your sound in. Let's play this back. In fact, we'll loop it first because we've only got uh, half of it there, don't we? We'll zoom on out and we'll loop this so that we've got eight bars to play with. We'll tap it, we'll loop it, and then we'll come in here to our sound again. So I'll play this back and we'll move this around and you'll hear that we can get some pretty cool different sounds with this. All right, cool. So what I'm thinking is I, I kind of, I like the bright and I like the wide and I like a little bit of this like un, un, unison decay. So what I can do is I can actually just slide it around about here and just put it there. And I've created my own custom preset that's like a bit of wide, a bit of bright, a bit of that and a bit of that. You can like mix and match. So now my synth sound is this. And that's sort of the sound that I want. There you go. Now you do have things like pitch bend wheel and modulation wheel that you can play around with over here as you're recording and a velocity dial here that we talked about in a recent show. So you can play with those as well if you want to, uh, if you want to explore. But there's so much more to this because if we scroll across here, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks don't even ever touch this, but we've got another entire group of dials and knobs. You like knobs? Today's show is going to be all about knobs. So if you're a knob fan... Welcome aboard. So on this front screen, when we move this around, what you'll notice is that the delay, the cutoff, the chorus, and the resonance are all changing, yeah? So as we move this around, it's changing those dials. So that is what is actually being affected. Now we can then come over here and manually adjust these. So we can actually get a more customized tone. So if, I've, if I want this tone to start with, but I'm like, actually, I kind of need a little bit more delay and chorus on that. What I can do is play it. And I can customize the tone, customize the sound to what I want it to be. I'm just going to bump that volume a little bit because now that I've adjusted it, it's gone a bit quiet compared to our drum beat. So let's come back into this. Then what we can do is scroll on across and all you need to do is grab at the top here and scroll it. Doesn't work with the mouse because um, GarageBand's mouse support is a little bit junky. Uh, but if we scroll across there, we can come here and we can do all this. So here's the same four knobs that we saw on our front screen, but now we've got our amp LFO. We've got our panning knob. We've got our glide speed. We've got our unison knob here. And we've got these. We've got our crossfade XY here. And then we've got our low frequency oscillator and a high pass cutoff. So we can actually use these to affect our sound. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, hitch the play button and play around with some of these. So you can quickly make a bit of a mess of things, really. So I, I tend to do these sort of things and then come back to here and go, oh, that was terrible. Let's just reset it to default. And then we're back to a... Uh... We've still got a lot of delay going on there, don't we? <laughs> now, you, you can then come in here to your presets and actually save the preset that you've done. So if I loved this preset, I don't. But if I did, I could come in here and save this and just go Classic 80s Synth uh, Pete Edition. And I can save in that. And then in the future, if I want to use this, I can actually just come in here to my actual custom sound. See how I've got a custom folder here now? I can come to that custom synth. So we'll leave that one for now. Let's do another one because there's some other cool things that you can do here with the Alchemy synth. I'm actually going to mute that one and we're going to hit plus. Let's add another synth sound here, shall we? Why don't we go with a pad? So hit Alchemy synth. It's going to bring us in here and it's gone with the epic cloud formation. Happens to be one of my favorites. And I actually like using the Epic Cloud Formation in Pitch Mode because you can change. The other thing you can do here in uh, in your Alchemy Synth is change it to Pitch Mode. So now... We can do that, yeah. 
Now there's some cool things we can do here because as you know, we can move this around as we play. We can move that. And if we want to record in those changes, look what happens. If we hit the record button here and we start playing, So we've played in that part and it actually records in those changes. So if we hit play on this, take a look. No hands. Look, ma, no hands. Now I know what you may be thinking. Pete, that's great, but I've only got two hands and it's hard enough for me to play a keyboard instrument without having to worry about doing all of that business at the same time. Well, you've got quite an attitude, but I hear you and I understand. So let's delete this out and we'll uh, try that again. But this time, let's just record in. I'll try and do a better job of something a bit cooler this time. We'll start with it here up here in the Losh setting. We'll hit record and uh, I'll, I'll just play in a part. I'll play something that makes a bit more sense and we'll try this out. Ready? There you go. So we've recorded that in. Pretty cool, yeah, but a bit boring because it's just sitting there on that lush setting. If we play it back, it sounds like this. Not bad, but we can do better, right? So if we wanted to now tweak this, any of these knobs, any of the pads here, any of these knobs here, and even our XY, we can actually move while we're actually recording. And we can do that using this mode up here, track settings, recording mode, and we can do merge recordings, on. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-record this, but instead of actually using the keys and playing something, we're just going to record in our knobs. Yep, we're going to just play with our knobs and nothing else. And what we can do is actually record over the top of this. It's pretty cool. If we hit the uh, record button here, it's going to play back that thing that I just played, but I'm going to grab this filter and flanger cutoff and do a little bit of funky playing around with this because look at that. Look at that effect. It looks cool. Uh, so let's hit the record button and show you what I mean. There you go. Not perfect, but again, we can try that over and over again because we can undo it and try it again. So if we hit play on this one now, check it out. Watch our little knob. Now we can't edit that, but of course we can continue to layer up different sounds. So say we wanted to use these, play with this panning now as we do it. Let's hit record again and we'll grab it. So when people say you can't you can't do automation of anything except for your volume in GarageBand, well you kind of can because you can automate any of your synth sounds, any of your knob movements by just using your merge recordings function and then recording in your changes. Because now if we hit play, watch this, we've got our, our panning modulation here will go and we'll also have our, our flanger and our high pass filter going, watch it. And if we want to get super funky, let's come back over here and we'll, we'll play around with, uh, with our, our knobs, our sliders over here on the pad at the same time. And let's just create something super wacky. There you go. Now everything's moving. <laughs> so you can see how you can layer this stuff up and create some pretty darn cool sounds with our alchemy synth. So, and, and don't don't forget, there, there are literally hundreds of alchemy synth patches, a whole heap that have been added in all of the different packs that we've had over the time. So you see, you've got your God, Godenza Latina here, your Flex and Flow pack, and there's been a bunch of them. So if you go to your sound library, you can download a whole bunch of additional ones. And there's strings, there's brass, there's mallets. And as you can see here, the cool thing about this is when you're using something like this, make sure you do customize it because every man and his dog, right, is using. But if you come in here and you're like, oh, I actually want it to be around about there and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to drop this to here and I'm going to give it a little bit slower attack, slower release, I want my sound to actually be like this. Right? 
A lot of cool stuff that you can do with it. You can play around with it to your heart's content. So if you're, especially if you're creating electronic music, or even if you're not, if you're just adding pads to rock songs or to any other sort of songs, the Alchemy Synth can be something that you can check out. There's other videos here on the channel all about the Alchemy Synth as well, so you can check those ones out. But uh, yeah, happy synthing and happy creating.